Welcome to part two of the front end developer roadmap. If you haven't seen part one, then make sure you watch that video first. Otherwise, this might be a little confusing. If you are coming from the front end developer roadmap part one, then you know that we talked about HTML, CSS, JavaScript. No, we didn't because we didn't talk about JavaScript yet. And that's what we're going to be doing today. Today, we're going to be talking about the roadmap for how you should learn JavaScript and what framework you should learn, which is going to be React. Let's just dive right into it and I'll see you at the end of the video. Bye. The next phase is phase two, JavaScript. And what do you know, <laughs> front end developers knowing JavaScript, that's just like bread and butter because if you wanna do front end development as a software engineer, JavaScript is a must. So the first course that I recommend is a YouTube course and it's a JavaScript tutorial for beginners. Let's click on that and let's see who the teacher is. I'm a huge fan of NetNinja. He has so much content out there related to JavaScript, frameworks, anything related to coding, to be honest. And I'm just surprised how much free content he's able to kind of push out, regardless of how much I love this guy. Um, I really feel that this introduction to JavaScript for beginners is great. And there's about 47 videos. There's a lot of videos, I admit, but I feel that you learning these little tidbits of JavaScript is gonna go so far for you. And definitely watch each of them, take good notes, write it into your own Visual Studio editor. Hopefully if you know your Git by then, maybe you could use Git and GitHub to push up these changes that you make in JavaScript to your personal profile. That way you can kind of keep track of your progress. All of that is super important, but 47 videos of a gentle introduction to JavaScript is a great start to phase number two. The second course that I recommend is the async JavaScript crash course, callbacks, promises, async await. And this is another YouTube course. Big shout out to Brad Traversi, always pumping out the free content. As a front end developer, you're gonna have to know your callbacks, you're gonna have to know your promises, and you're gonna have to know your async awaits. JavaScript is all about <laughs> asynchronous coding. So if you don't know what that means, watch this video and just really get a good grasp, at least of a basic understanding of what these callbacks, promises, and async awaits are. Ultimately, these are three strategies on how to handle asynchronous programming. 24 minutes of a free content material. Take it and take some notes, write some code. And of course, number two should be done. Take a few days to just really absorb the material. I know I haven't really added more resources outside of this for async await, but maybe you could even Google these callbacks or promises in case this video is not enough. Don't feel obligated to only use these materials that I'm giving. If anything, I'm just giving you some examples of courses that you could take a look into based on the subjects that I'm talking about. The third course I'm going to recommend is this What Are APIs video. It looks like I didn't add a little uh, video tag here, but luckily for you, this is another YouTube video. So this is not a coding tutorial. In this video, it's just gonna show you a high level of what an API is. Regardless of if you're a front end or a back end developer, you're gonna have to know what APIs are. So hopefully this video can give you a high level understanding of it. Definitely lean into learning more about APIs if this video wasn't clear or if you're just more curious about it. I remember when I first learned about APIs, it was super hard for me to wrap my head around. It took me a bit to understand at least a good month or two to fully understand what it really meant. So um, definitely check out this video. It's not a coding tutorial, so you can kind of sit down and take notes again and see if you can fully grasp what uh, an API is. After you learn at a high level what an API is, you're going to have to know how to use an API as a front end developer. This video here, and while we're waiting for it, is another Brad Traversy course. And here he's gonna give you a gentle introduction again to the Fetch API. And the Fetch API is a built-in JavaScript uh, API actually that will help you fetch uh, external resources whenever needed. So definitely take uh, some time to watch this course, follow the examples and see what it really means as a front-end developer to utilize and reference to APIs. The fifth course that I think is kind of optional, but I would still recommend it again because it's on there, is the 50 Projects in 50 Days by Pratt Traversi and... Who's that other guy? Hold up. Wait a minute. 
Something ain't right. <laughs> Floor and pop. That's right. This is really cool because 50 projects in 50 days, this is so awesome. And don't feel like you have to do 50 projects in 50 days. I think that's just kind of like a marketing sell. If there are days where you could do more than one project, by all means, do it. If there are days you just want to skip, then do it. But the whole point of this is I would just view this as 50 projects in X number of days. You decide what you want to do with this. As long as you're retaining value here, you're going to end up building 50 projects using not only HTML, not only CSS, but now you're incorporating JavaScript. And I took a look at a few of these projects and some of them are going to be using some kind of asynchronous programming, using some type of fetch, which is exactly why I told you to take some of these previous courses before to get yourself up to speed to be able to build out these 50 projects. Hopefully you're going to be having fun while building out these 50 projects. That's the whole intent behind coding in general is you want to have fun and you want to be able to kind of see the output of your code. So 50 projects in 50 days, highly recommend. You knew your price is kind of high again, but hopefully there's a flash sale when you watch this video and it's a little bit cheaper. Project number two in the JavaScript phase is building a Star Wars application. And here, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be leveraging all the stuff that you've learned, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and you're going to build out a website that utilizes the Star Wars API. The point of this project is to get you familiar with reading documentation, fetching data, and displaying that information on the UI. If you can, try to deploy this application on Heroku or Netlify. I highly recommend you to use Git, GitHub, and version control whenever possible. That is going to be your hub of where you store all your projects and whatnot. And that's kind of how you advertise yourself as a developer. So definitely leverage that. And if you can, use Teams whenever necessary. Let's take a look at the API and I'll kind of break down a few things. But ultimately, it's up to you to be able to read an API documentation and kind of build something out of it. I'm going to leave that a little open-ended for you. If you're not a big fan of Star Wars, I'm sorry. There are a lot of other free APIs you can use, like the Pokemon API and whatnot. So look for free APIs if you are a huge non-fan of Star Wars. So the Star Wars API, um, SW API, I guess, is a cool API where you can search for characters in the Star Wars series. So in this example, you'll see that it'll be HTTPS uh, swap API dot dev slash API slash people slash one. And if I request it, it'll give me Luke Skywalker. If I do people slash two, huh, oh, I, I see, I see. You have to do people slash three slash and then request. That's R2D2. These requests are very, very close to what you'll be doing as a front end developer. And here you're going to have some information about the character, which is their name, maybe their height, the films that they were part of, the vehicles, starship species. And what's really cool with this is that they're not just going to give you all of the information at once. What they're going to do is for example, for films, it's going to say you have to make a request to this API here to un understand which film it is. So what you can do here, at least on this UI, is do slash API slash film slash one, and then you're going to get the title of the movie. So there is a little bit of finagling that you're going to have to do with the API as a front end developer. And that's why it's so challenging, but it's going to be so fun to work with. I personally think this API is not just like a free gimme API that's super easy to use. It kind of forces you to think about, hey, how do I want to best structure my code to um, essentially build out a nice project that leverages a scalable API? So yeah, good luck with that. And let me know how that goes. So phase three, we're kind of at the ending point of this front end developer roadmap. We have learned the HTML, we've learned the CSS, we've learned Git, Terminal, JavaScript. Now let's go into that beautiful, 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 beautiful framework. Uh, and in this case, it's going to be React. And the first course that we're going to be taking is the React Crash Course 2021. And this is made by Brad Traversy. 
This is about an hour and 15 minutes, and it's going to be another introduction or crash course to React 2021. I highly recommend just watching this video and just getting yourself familiar with React. What is React? Why is React useful in our ecosystem? And how does that make you more appealing in the job market? It's going to give you a good introduction to state management and all of that stuff and how they kind of abstract away some of the complexities of just using vanilla JavaScript when building out applications. Definitely watch this video. It's free. It's about an hour and 50 minutes. Totally recommend. Take your time with it. And hopefully you'll get a better understanding of why we want to use React and why React is so useful. The second course I recommend is the Modern React with Redux. And I personally took this course maybe four or five years ago, and it's been updated for 2021. I really love Steven Greider as an instructor, and I think that he kind of breaks down a lot of these concepts in a very simple way. Let's take a look at his course. So in this course, he's going to be going over not only React, but he's going to be going over Redux with you. This is going to be somewhat comprehensive because as great as React is, there are some uncomfortable things about it if you don't have a framework that kind of wraps around it to provide it a little bit more usability when managing state. So this is kind of where Redux kicks in. He's a great instructor. And what's awesome about him is that he updated his curriculum using hooks. So the courses aren't fully outdated or anything like that. Definitely recommend this course because it helped me and hopefully it can help you. The third course I want to recommend is React.js building a streaming service by coding face. I put it as optional, but like I said, again, if it's on the board, you probably want to do it. Well, he is actually building out this course um, right now, and I believe he's very close to finishing. This is updated 2021 as of June. So you know that a lot of the stuff that he's implementing is going to be very modern and up to date. What he's going to be doing in this course, and let's just click on the link. In this course, he's going to be building out a HBO clone, but it's not just one of those one to two, three hour clones. It's going to be a full out built out project using React. It's going to be very similar to the HBO streaming service, plus some other features. I've talked to Coding Phase a lot about this project. And if you see some of these videos, they're 24 minutes long. And one of the sections is 30 minutes and 59 seconds long like these are very very long videos and it's very intentional that way because you'll be able to see what a professional developer does when he's building out a project and how do you refactor your code to make it the most scalable make it the most reusable and whatnot even though it is optional you should take this course because it's part of the package as well if you do do the monthly or the yearly membership so go ahead and take this course when you finish out the previous ones so project number three in the react section is going to be rebuilding the star wars application in react hopefully you didn't skip out on building your star wars application using vanilla javascript and if you did Shame on you. Now look what's happening. You're going to have to rebuild or build a new project using React. So either way, if you didn't do project number two, you're going to have to build it again on project number three. If you've done project number two, you're already pretty familiar with the API. So you know exactly what you need to do. And I'm going to cross my fingers and just wish that you did. If you, did. If you didn't, then I don't know what to tell you. Project number four is we're going to be building out an e-commerce site. Right now, we've been so focused on the front end that we don't really have any type of back end that we personally created where we could like persist data and whatnot. And that does become a problem as a front end developer sometimes where it's like, if you don't know how to build out an API, you can't really build out a full stack application. What's nice about this is that we're going to be referencing to the fake store API. And let's take a look at this uh, URL. The Fixed Store API is a REST API for your e-commerce or shopping website prototype. It's not meant to be used in production by any means, but what you can do here is, like, for example, if I make a fetch on products number one, it'll give you the title, it'll give you the price, it'll give you the description, it'll give you an image. So for this project, what I want you to do is to read into the documentation, figure out how to fetch products, um, utilize the carts, utilize the users that are part of your e-commerce website, try to build out this fake e-commerce website using the resources that are given to you here. And if you just even notice here, like we're just doing a quick fetch on the products for product number one. But if you click on products here, 
then this will give you a list of all the products. You can already see where I'm going with this is like we want to build out as close to a real e-commerce website as much as possible. But there are going to be some limitations where we can't maybe create new products and whatever. But for this front end developer roadmap, maybe we don't have to put as much weight into that as you would if you were trying to build out a full stack service. Use this fake store API, build out the e-commerce website, and hopefully by the end of these three phases, you'll have four projects. Two of them are the same projects, one built in JavaScript, vanilla, and another built in React. The last phase is completely optional. It's not necessary for front-end development, but I personally feel that as a front-end developer, you have to kind of know a little bit of back-end because you're going to be having conversations with back-end developers. It might be worth just looking into it, taking a course, and kind of just understanding what it means to do authentication. What does it mean to have a database and all of that jazz? This is a course that is a free course on YouTube. So you're not going to be breaking the bank learning it. And just whenever you have the time and if you feel like you need to get to that next level of learning more backend development, this is going to be that introduction. There are way more backend resources that I didn't put on here. So um, do your research or maybe you could find a backend developer roadmap instead. And lastly, these are just the resources that I was referencing to, which is the free HTML and CSS themes using HTML5 up. And the second one is paid HTML themes using ThemeForest. ThemeForest is used by a lot of professional developers or freelancers that want to build out beautiful websites, but don't want to necessarily come up with the whole design. What you can do here is just buy a theme from anybody essentially and then you just kind of work with that and you kind of modify the html you modify the css some of them are just built in already in react so maybe you could work with that i'll leave that up to you to decide but ultimately if you want to kind of spruce up your website or make it more beautiful either use the html5 which is free or you could pay a little bit of money and have that kind of more professional feel so yeah that's it that's my front end developer roadmap this is my first time creating something like this. So if you feel like there are parts that I'm missing, you're probably right. Don't treat my roadmap like it's a Bible or this is the only things you should learn. If there are other learning strategies or materials that you feel that are helpful for you in your journey, add them into your studying. Don't feel as though you're forced to do what I recommend because there are so many different ways one can become a developer. But what I want to provide for those of you that are kind of lost in your coding journey is somewhat of a path and a realistic path of a way to learn and potentially land that first job as a software developer. So that's it. Let me know in the comments if you found this useful. If you hated my front end developer roadmap, let me know as well because I may be completely wrong here. Either way, thank you for watching this video. And for those developers that are learning how to code or trying to break into tech, your time will come.